guys. So today we have Ahmad Pulis, uh, who is uh, organizer and founder of one of the biggest uh, uh, gaming and gambling conference called Sigma, and as well one of uh, the biggest AI and uh, blockchain show uh, called a AI and Blockchain Summit, mm -hmm. AIBC, which is held in uh, different countries in the world. Great to have you here, Ahmad. Always a pleasure talking to you, Anna. Yeah, so can you tell us how did you get in, uh, into the conference uh, industry, conference business, and like first your conference was Sigma, mm -hmm. and then you got into crypto. Uh, so can you tell us as well how you started your involvement in crypto and why do, did you generally decide, uh, uh, decide to organize conferences? With pleasure. I was in events all my life. Events are in my DNA. So I don't come from an industry specific. I don't come from gaming or from blockchain. I come from events. I used to organize parties as a younger uh, teen. Uh, got sick and tired of doing parties and morphed into conference organizer. First conference was back in 2014 and I never looked back since. Come this November, my next conference is expecting 25,000 people in mm -hmm. not a major city in the beautiful island of Malta, where we're going to have four conferences merged into one. Conference one on online gambling, blockchain and artificial intelligence, medical technology, as well as digital marketing and affiliation. Yeah, nice. Actually, it was uh, my second international conference when I attended probably your first edition of uh, AIBC. The blockchain one, yeah. 2018. Yeah, probably it was for, ah, yeah, yeah, in 2018. <laughs> it was such a long time ago. Uh, so uh, can you tell uh, about your involvement in crypto? When did you first discover it? And uh, why did you realize that uh, it will have a big future? Um, great question. I discovered it purely by chance through the contacts that I was building in the online gambling space. So I had some of the greatest operators and B2B suppliers in gaming exhibiting. One of those exhibitors back in 2014 was telling me about Bitcoin and felt like teaching me how to open a wallet. So I owned the first Bitcoin back in 2014. And, uh, and I still cherish this friendship with this gentleman till today because it was a blessing in disguise. Um, back then, I didn't think much of it, um, but uh, we all know that uh, it seems there's no turning back for the crypto market. Yeah, that's pretty nice. So did you uh, hold uh, the Bitcoin all the time or did you uh, sell it shortly? Hold, hold, hold. I'm a big believer of holding. And uh, we also, as the Sigma group, uh, we have a lot of exhibitors who sometimes they, uh, or, or delegates who sometimes they wish to pay in crypto and we, we embrace that as well and we hardly uh, change any crypto to fiat. Yeah, it's the right strategy to hold and great to see you're such a believer in crypto in this industry. And your first crypto conference was during the bear market. Uh, so what were the challenges for you back then? And as well, we see now the same bear markets. Yeah, um, look, the DNA of the delegates that came in 2018 is completely different from the delegates that we're expecting in 2022 in Malta. Um, 2018 was the madness of ICOs. You had a lot of riffraff uh, mingling with the legitimate crowd. And quite frankly, I wasn't too happy with that. Um, with every bear market, those uh, folks, the riffraff, gets to um, uh, walk away. So the more bear markets I see, the less um, uh, scammy products uh, are present at every conference I go to. So, you know, if there's always a silver, a silver lining, and this is certainly one fat silver lining for the bear market that we're experiencing at, at the moment. 
Yes, it's true, and it's uh, good to see such development of the industry. And as well, like being in the industry for uh, for a few years already, uh, what uh, crypto adoption do you see, and uh, how much did the industry change, and what what growth do you see in the industry in terms of numbers, maybe? Yeah, it's surprising how realities change based on where you see where your opticals uh, lay. We have six major conferences around the world, three of which are international, three of which are regional. Our international shows are in Malta, in Dubai, where we have Gary V anticipated for March coming in Dubai. So Malta, Dubai and Manila are our international shows. Then we have Kenya, Nairobi, Brazil, Sao Paulo, and Limassol, Cyprus, targeting the Balkans and the CIS market. In every show, um, you see adoption of crypto from different perspectives, right? So when we go to Kenya, to Sao Paulo, to the Philippines, where you have um, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people who do not have access to a bank account, they see crypto adoption in a much different way than we do um, in uh, first world countries. So... Yes, different realities mean different um, modes of uh, adoption of crypto, right? Yes, it's true. And uh, what can you tell about uh, the state of crypto in Malta now? It used to be like everybody talked about Malta. There were so many uh, crypto companies there. Actually, there are still a lot of uh, crypto people and crypto companies there. Uh, but uh, they have uh, they had some challenges with uh, the crypto license issues. So many uh, companies just moved to the other jurisdictions. Uh, what uh, developments do you see currently in Malta? What's uh, the state? of crypto regulations there? Yeah, well, the three bills that Malta enacted back in November 2018, actually, those laws were enacted on the day of the opening of my conference. So uh, that was a great, great moment in uh, Malta's modern history, if you can call it that. Many companies realized that the laws were very, very robust, very stringent, and not anyone um, can simply apply and get a license. Why? Malta is part of the European Union, and rightly so. I believe that the three bills enacted, they really protect the end consumer. Um, Malta didn't want to forget that, you know, this is a new space, and the need for robust regulation is needed. Um, some companies may have felt that this was um, uh, the bar was too high for them to be able to operate, and uh, it's they decided to go elsewhere, um, which is fine. Um, but the three bills are still there, and uh, I believe Malta still stands a unique um, uh, and still has a unique proposition because the online gaming industry is still. Um, heavily involved in Malta, right? Malta is still the hub of online gaming. Malta is doing great to embrace um, also esports uh, companies and digital games companies. And I see great synergies between those verticals as well as blockchain. You know, we're going to need blockchain regulation for iGaming. We're going to need blockchain regulation for esports eventually. And Malta will once again, I believe, play a crucial role in taking the lead in those uh, in, in those regards. So can you tell more about your upcoming conference in November? What are the biggest speakers you got? With pleasure. Um, without saying mentioning names so I don't forget anyone, uh, it is by far our largest conference. We're expecting 25,000 people coming between the 14th and the 18th of November in Malta. All hotels will be packed in the country. The roads will be jammed um, with uh, traffic, unfortunately. Restaurants will be brimming with activity. And this is the festival that we're looking forward to. It's not just about blockchain. It's about the application of blockchain, metaverse, Web3, quantum computing, AI, 
DeFi, GameFi, the application of all of this in verticals such as online gambling, esports, medical technology on one side. And let's not forget, we're also bringing thousands of digital marketeers, influencers, streamers, SEO wizards. These are all coming to the show. And uh, I need not explain that there's huge demand for traffic from crypto exchanges. There's huge demand for traffic from online casinos, online sports betting sites, uh, new games that require a community to adopt their games for token acquisition. So we're going to see this and much, much more come November in Malta. That's great. And as well, you like you mentioned that it's not specifically dedicated to crypto blockchain. It's as well okay. AI, esports, gaming. And uh, like from the last year, we saw quite a big trend of building uh, blockchain games. And as well, we see just giant corporations transferring to blockchain, uh, implementing NFTs. Uh, what what kind of developments do you see in that space? And uh, are many of your previous exhibitors at your previous conferences transferring now into blockchain and NFTs? Yeah, it's look, the merge is happening. And I'll tell you a couple of things. So we have a number of startup pitches where currently we have two months to go to the show, right? We're leaving no stone unturned to bring hundreds of qualified VCs investors, angel investors to the show. And we have a number of very exciting startups and projects who are in the cross section between gaming and blockchain technology. So um, expect some serious uh, pitches to be made on stage, expect to meet literally hundreds of qualified investors. And uh, it's, an ex it's a very exciting space to be in at the moment, right? So. To the extent that besides our events business, we ourselves have decided to launch a VC fund. It's called Ikigai Ventures, ikigaiventures.io. And what brings to the table Ikigai Ventures is the bandwidth of the Sigma group behind it. And we want to invest in that space, right? Where is the intersection between gaming and blockchain? I believe in the next eight years, we won't be able to tell those two apart because they're going to merge into one super vertical and we want to be part of that nice and can you tell more about your activities in ikigai ventures how big is the fund like are you focused on any specific uh, industries within web3 or no and so uh, what uh what are the projects in your portfolio currently yeah with pleasure um ikigai Ventures started last year was launched last year um, has a shelf life of eight years to 10 years. So we want to wrap things up in 10 years. It's a 20 million fund and our mandate is global. So we do not shun any startups, wherever they come from. We want to specifically invest in startups that are between iGaming, esports and gaming, as well as blockchain technology, emerging tech, uh, AI, uh, token, crypto, and so on. So if there is any startups out there who fall in this category, we would love to hear from you. We would love to mentor you, support you, both financially, but also in very obvious and subtle ways through the Sigma group. Great. And as well, you organize conferences in different parts of the world. Uh, like you recently have the, your conference even in Serbia, like focused on CIC regions. As well, in summer, you had a conference in Canada. You mentioned you have other editions, like in uh, Philippines and Dubai, etc. Uh, so can you tell us how do you see the differences between crypto regulations in the different uh, regions? And as well, which regions and countries are the most active in crypto? Yeah, uh, great, great, great point. Um, you know, in uh, territories like the European Union, there's legislation uh, being drafted at EU level, right, which is going to harmonize um, law across the European Union members. Uh, it's happening, and I, uh, I look forward to advances like that. Um, in other places, you know, it's different. Um, uh, again, when you go to third world countries, in places in Philippines, places in uh, Brazil, you have a lot of people who are unbanked 
and the realities there are very, very different. Um, probably one of the most exciting places um, from the six regions where we have conferences, I must say it's Dubai. There's, there's a heavy crypto community and the government is at the forefront in uh, regulating the space. And even geopolitically, um, Dubai is situated so well between uh, uh, very prominent places in Asia as well as Europe. Connections are great in Dubai. Um, to get to Dubai is very, very easy. Infrastructure is amazing. So I see a very bright future um, for the Emirates in the space of blockchain and artificial intelligence. Yeah, they have been trying to be first in, in every industry and uh, good to see them like implementing uh, crypto friendly regulations. And like, as we know, especially during Corona times, you started your first edition in Dubai. So that's right, that's right. Um, uh, um, I'm surprised you remember, yes. So since 2014, when we had our first show, we always had it in Malta. When COVID hit, rather than shrinking, we decided to launch our first show in May 2020. And 2020, 2021, sorry. Yeah. In May 2021, we had our first show in Dubai. It was our very first experience outside the Maltese comfort shores. And it was a super success. And since then, we just decided, okay, if we can do it in Dubai during COVID, we can do it anywhere. That's true. <laughs> and uh, as well, you mentioned that uh, you have as well edition in Kenya. So uh, did you have a, as well offline conference there or did you have just uh, online conference uh, focused on uh, African region for now? We never had one in Africa, but we have a conference for around a thousand people lined up in January. Mm -hmm. So the first time we're hitting the African continent will be in Nairobi. We're going to combine that conference with some uh, Jeep safaris. So there's a lot of interesting places to see in Kenya. And I really, I'm really looking forward to start the year with a trip uh, to that city of Nairobi. Have you been there before or not yet? <laughs> no, I don't. This is crazy. It's going to sound crazy. I've traveled all over the world. I don't think I've, no, I've never been to Africa yet. Yeah. Never been to Africa. I'm going this Christmas for the first time on uh, holiday. But uh, yeah, then January will be my first work trip to Africa. Yeah, so same for me. Maybe I'll come for the first time for your conference in January. And Kenya is as well like the third country in terms of uh, crypto adoption and in regards to the percentage of uh, population which holds crypto. And uh, actually, Alex plans to go there for another conference uh, in the end of September, but he still has some worries about the safety in Kenya. I don't think there is anything to worry about. We've done our research. Kenya has a thriving economy, um, uh, especially you go to the city of Nairobi. Um, uh, trust me, I think you'll, you'll be fine. Um, don't do anything crazy. Uh, just follow common sense and uh, you'll be you'll be okay yeah i guess so and uh what current uh, trends do you see in the crypto market well i'm uh, very closely tied to the iGaming space right and mm -hmm. in the iGaming space i can tell you there's huge uh, interest in uh, adopting crypto as a form of payment so Nowadays, most casinos are embracing crypto as a form of payment. Um, and I'm seeing also a number of slot producers who are looking at putting their games on the blockchain, which means now you have slot games that can tell you whether the number generation is provenly fair for the player, right? Before we had to rely on games testers, we had to rely on the regulator, so we had to rely on a central authority to tell us this game is fair. Mm -hmm. Nowadays on the blockchain, we don't need that anymore. So there's a lot of slots companies uh, who produce slot games online who are looking at this technology. 
Yeah, and as well, you mentioned that you moved uh, from Malta to Cyprus. Can you tell us what's happening there, like uh, in terms of iGaming and crypto? Yeah, very early in 2022, uh, we decided to move here because it's close to Dubai, uh, which is where we have a lot of business. Um, Dubai is a little bit too hot for us, especially with kids. Um, we decided we wanted a place that's, you know, a little bit more comfortable in uh, terms of weather. Cyprus is just a great place. I tell you that. I didn't know much about it until we decided to look into it. But it has some of the greatest beaches. You can even ski on the island of Cyprus. So you can do skiing in winter. That's cool. So from a, from a leisure point of view, um, for someone like me who has a very young family, I have two very young kids, it's just a perfect place, super safe, um, great infrastructure. People don't seem to be stressed at all here. Everyone lives in a nice little mansion. Um, it's just great. It's just great. I love it. Do you and, plan any conferences in future in Cyprus? Oh, absolutely. Um, so I'll give you a little scoop. We haven't announced it yet, but I'll announce it here on this interview. Um, uh, next year, we're moving our Balkan CIS conference. Now we have a conference that focuses on the Balkans and CIS region. Mm -hmm. um, we're moving that from Belgrade to Limassol. Um, in September 2023. Um, and I'm looking forward to it. There's a huge uh, community of Ukrainians, Russians, Russian-speaking uh, community here in Cyprus. There's also a huge community of Israelis and uh, also Jewish people who have set up really good tech business here. And Cyprus, the government of Cyprus is really looking forward to embrace um, uh, regulating the crypto space, regulating also the online gambling space. Um, so there's, there's a lot going on in Cyprus and uh, I'm pleased to see that the government is quite forward, forward looking. That's great. And as well, can you tell about some challenges in the conference organization business? And like you're obviously quite a big uh, leader and uh, you have been making such a great and big conferences for years. And uh, can you tell like, how, how do you manage your team and uh, how, like, uh, how to be a leader? Oh, managing my team is the easiest part. I love people. I love mentoring people as well. So we have a great team of young people in the company. And I love having the opportunity to be of influence um, to all of them, right? They're like an extended family to me. So we don't have this mentality of, oh, we need work-life balance. And um, we rather think of work-life synergies where parts of the work environment become part of the lifestyle, right? Um, a lot of our clients become our friends. And uh, I take joy in seeing uh, my team mingling with clients, with uh, fellow colleagues from the industry outside office hours. So managing the team is the fun part. I love it. The toughest part is having to deal with emergencies during the show. So you try and think of the worst case scenario at all times right but no matter how much you plan ahead there's always going to be something that props up that's going to jeopardize you know uh, to an extent uh, the the flow of the conference i'll give you a small example last year in 20 in november 2021 we were organizing a conference in a country that was extremely strict with COVID, right? So the limit was no more than 100 people could gather uh, in a closed environment. And we had 20,000 people who registered for the conference. So how can you fit 20,000 people in 100 people? We just couldn't. So we had to stay dissecting the venue making sure that only 100 people can come in from here. Only 100 people can come from here. It was just a logistical nightmare, right? So um, we had to face the decision between cancelling or plowing ahead. 
Um, thank God we plowed ahead because closer to the show, the restrictions, like just a few days before the shows, the government um, had lifted the restrictions and uh, we could hold the show without any, any problems. Um, but yeah, it's the joys of events, right? If I didn't want the stress, I would have chosen to work as a librarian uh, somewhere so in some library at some university. Um, I love what I do and I can't see myself doing anything else. Yeah, I hope we won't see such restrictions anymore. And uh, as well, can you share your thoughts? What will be the next catalyst for the next bull market? What will be the catalyst for the next bull market? Yeah. I'm hoping it's happening soon with the Ethereum merge, um, which kind of represents a bit of, like it reminds me of the Bitcoin halving, right? I'm hoping we're going to see a rally um, uh, sometime soon, thanks to the Ethereum merge. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah, hopefully this bear market won't be so long and we'll see the development of much greater projects. And uh, see you everybody on 14th, 18th November in Malta. And thank you, Aman, for such interesting interview. Thank you, Anna. I look forward to welcome you all with arms wide open to Malta. Thank you.